Hi, this is Dr. Dave. What we're going to look at now is how to calculate a finance charge on a credit card using the average daily balance method. In a previous video, we used the unpaid balance method, which is not very much in use anymore. However, the average daily balance is probably used by most credit cards. So, suppose that on January 1st, you have a credit card balance of $620. On January 10th, you purchase a magazine subscription for $20. On January 12th, you return an item to Target for a credit of $34.50. On January 22nd, you make a payment of $500. On January 25th, you make a purchase at Safeway of $112. The annual interest rate on the credit card is 21% and calculate the finance charge for January that will appear on next month's statement using the average daily balance method. So the key here is in order to be able to calculate an average daily balance, I need to know what the balance is on each and every day of the month. So from January 1st through January 31st. So it says on January 1st, I have a, a balance of $620. The next transaction I have is on January 10th. That means on the 1st, the 2nd, the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, the 7th, the 8th, all of those days and the 9th, I'm going to have that balance. Now on January 10th, there's a transaction. All right, so this transaction is the subscription. and it's going to yield a change in balance. It's going to increase my balance by $20 because it's a purchase. So plus 20. That means after that transaction, my balance will be $640. So the next transaction is on January 12th. So I'll have that balance of 640 on the 10th and on the 11th. On the 12th, I return an item to Target, so that's a return, and that's going to be reduce my balance by $34.50. So I'm going to subtract $34.50. So when I go ahead and subtract $34.50, we have a balance of $640, and it's going to be reduced by the return by $34.50. So that gives my new balance of $605. So that gives my new balance of $605.50. Now remember I made that transaction on the 12th. The one after that is on the 22nd. So I'm going to have that balance on the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, the 16th, 17th, the 18th, the 19th, the 20th and the 21st. On the 22nd is where my next transaction occurs. And that one is a payment. And a payment is going to reduce my balance by $500. So from the $605.50 balance, it's going to reduce it by $500. That's going to leave me with a balance of $105.50. The next transaction is on January 25th, so I'm going to have that balance on the 22nd, the 23rd, the 24th, and the 20, not the 25th, because that's where the next one is. So the next one goes down here on the 25th. And that's a purchase at Safeway. And it's a purchase of $112, so that's going to add to my balance $112. So my 105.50, when I add $112, that gives me a new balance of $217.50. And I know I'm going to have that balance through the end of the month because that's my last transaction. So 26, 27, the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, and the 31st. All right, so now we need to figure out our average daily balance. And to do that, I need to know how many days I had that balance, 
and what the balance was. So for this first one, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, that's nine days. We had the balance of 640 for two days. The balance of 605, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 for 10 days. The balance of 105.50 for three days. And then the balance of 217.50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 days. So if I've done this correctly, these should add up to being 31 days. So 9 plus 2 is 11, plus 10 is 21, another 10 is 31. So I've accounted for the entire month. So now I need to work out my average daily balance. And the way I do that is I need to add up the balances on all 31 days. I could say 620 plus 620 plus 620 nine times, and then 640 plus 640, 60550 10 times in my sum. But to make it easier, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage and say, 620 times 9, instead of adding up 629 times, I'm going to add that 640 times the two days plus 605.50 times the 10 days, the 105.50 times the three days, and finally the 217.50 times seven days. That's going to account for all 31 days, so then I divide it by 31. When I work out that top, it comes out to be 14,754 divided by 31. And so when I work out that division, I get a number that is approximately 475.5. That's to the nearest penny. Now, look at my numbers here. If I make a mistake here, if I were to do this incorrectly, and a lot of the time I'll see people go, oh, there's five lines to this table. I'm going to divide by five. If you do that, you get a number that is much, much larger. In fact, it's a number in the thousands. But look at these numbers. The lowest one's 105.50. The highest one's 640. The average daily balance has to be somewhere in between those two numbers. So if you work out this division and get something that is way bigger than your highest balance or way lower than your lowest balance, you know you've made some kind of a mistake. All right, so now I have the average daily balance. I need to work out the finance charge. And I'm going to do that the same way I did with the unpaid balance method. I'm going to use simple interest. So I'm going to take the average daily balance. I'm going to multiply it times the 21%, so it's the present value, which in this case is the average daily balance, times the rate, and now I'm going to multiply it by time. But since we're doing everything here on a daily basis, I'm going to multiply it by 31 over 365. Because a year, or a month in this case of January, is 31 days out of a total of 365. So that's the fraction of the year for January. When I put that into my calculator and work it out, so 475.94 times 0.21 times 31 divided by 365. So I get 8.4886 rounded to the nearest penny. That's $8.00 and 49 cents. So that would be the finance charge corresponding to the January bill. So the key thing here I find is when I do these average daily balance to make a table, list out the days. Don't say one through nine, because if you say one through nine, you have a tendency to say that's eight days. I like to list out the actual days so then I could count them up to get my nine days off to the side. 
but then it's balance times the days, balance times the days. You add those all up. That's the top part of the average daily balance. And then divide by the total number of days.